The Rap Round Table. Sheesh! It's a dime a dozen. Rap Round Table. Brooklyn. Guess who's Bazak? <laughs> really? Uh, to some people I never left. No need for magazines or the TV to be impressed. Elite, but you'll peak if some G's are in the vest of the blue check or some bigger records. Commercial playing on my sets while I'm in my section. Coincidental, this moment feels syndicated. It's the same faces. Cut a younger reckless. Ain't trying to see my children, they are generated. I've been God's favorite, how I'm dodging bullets unprotected. That mean I'm conscious how I'm coming. It ain't unexpected. Dickheads losing sense when they get erections. It is what it is, that's your treasure. If you a spinner, want a murderer and killer, why you even sexted? It's a FaceTime fuck, you DMing sex with. She at your neck, you getting checked, cause you win the checkers. Now you invested in the freak's affection. Cause when you slacking on your Mac and like a PC, you get infected. Made to talk crazy on his TV breaks. Alibs in his ass, tell me if you hear she's today. Sheesh. Pissing rappers off in the streaming age. Brooklyn Kendrick in the sea of ace. I can see your pain. Underground hove. Ironically, I'm jigger aged on blueprint. In the Porsche 911 hitting planes. No offense to the victim slain. You think you big, then hit him up and tell him fuck him in the clicky clank. Special guest pulling up to the rap round table. As y'all know, we love the underground scene, but we love our city just a little bit more than that. Facts. So anytime sure. you're an artist, you're putting in that work, and you say, yo, I want to come to the rap round table, and you're from the town, we're opening the doors. Facts. Down a dozen in the building. Welcome to the rap round table, family. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. I respect it for the culture. It's called pre gaming. You heard? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Listen, well, man, me. I appreciate you pulling up. Dude. I appreciate you, in fact, reaching out and making the connection to make this happen. You know what I mean? Yes, sir, yes, sir. I, I like people who are assertive. Who oh, want, yeah. You know, because it's like, as I've come across a lot of artists in my life, not many of them are very assertive. They have the ability. But it's usually someone else or to someone else's. You got to get by before you get to the person. Right, right. So to talk to you directly, I thought that was fly. But I want to get into this, you know, the timeline, the backstory of oh, that one. So, like, as an artist, you know, what made you decide that I want to rap? Now, how did you go about formulating who you are as a rapper today? Well, first off... I'm from Crown Heights, Brooklyn. Yes, sir. Crown Heights, Crown Brooklyn, Heights. New York. And um, I first started off as a gospel rapper, actually. Oh, wow. I was uh, sheltered from rap music growing up a lot. So my mom was very, like, heavily into the church. So the first time I ever seen a, a rapper perform was a gospel rapper by the name of Q the Prophet. Okay. So he performed at church, like, during the service and, you know, I, I saw it and I said I'm gonna do that, you know. So the first time I was inspired to perform and to rap, put bars together, was from him, and you know he, he actually ended up being my mentor. So okay. that's how I got started. So you say you know you were kind of sheltered. Yeah. I know for myself, <laughs> I had a young parent, so like my mom's listening to that rap. Right. She kind of helped me watch her flavor videos and shit, right? Facts. But my grandmother, not hearing it. Ah. But part of it was because she she was, you know, West Indian. Right. Was that like an issue for you as well? Did you have like a, a background that hindered people from like, don't listen to rap, that's noise. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, my mom was very much against uh, rap music being played in the house. So I grew up with two older sisters, for sure. So, yeah, I remember Shake Your Ass being on the radio one time. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's we, not the song to break through with your parents. Yeah, you know, sure we, not, we was in the man. cab. We was in the cab with my, you know, my sisters and my mom. And my mom was like, you know, turn that down, you know. So I remember like vividly shit like that. But you know, we would sneak in and mm, watch flavor facts. videos, mm -hmm. you know. So my sisters really put me on to like shit like Hove and like back in the day. I'm just getting flashbacks about like like really what I was watching, like Big Pimpin and. Uh, Uchi Wiley yeah. That was like What a time Right yeah. Classic <laughs> So we was sneaking peace, And watching it But city. my mom was not With it at all She didn't want us Watching That's funny I always tell the story I was like yo 
my grandmother came home when I was playing 36 Chambers. And I was playing Bring the Motherfucking Ruckus. <laughs> and I got in so much trouble. <laughs> get you an ass Bring the motherfucking Ruckus. Nigga, loud ass RZA. Bring the motherfucking <laughs> Ruckus. Yeah, you know I mean, I was like, yo, I love this shit. Yeah, anyway. So, like, before I pass the ball to my brothers, my last question for you How were you able to convince your mom to let you rap and, and really lean into it? Could you lean into it? Um, you know. I started off as a gospel rapper, so, ah, well you know, played. giving all glory to God, still, 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 giving all glory to God. That's a fact. You know, so. That's a real one right here. You know, so, lyrical content was very much Christian-based. Right. You know, so, mom wasn't really beefing about it. But as I grew, of course, like, YouTube came around and I started getting my own ideas out. So, you know, as a growing kid in Brooklyn, coming up with his own ideas, I wanted to, you know, Get my business out, grab my Canon camera, and everything wasn't gospel. <laughs> <I feel like. laughs> there you go. There you that's go. that's a real crazy entrance to to hip hop, but you know, being a gospel rapper, and I think stylistically we'll get into that at a benefit a little bit later because I think it does benefit your style. Facts. To be honest with you, but speak about the entrance into the rap game. How does from being a gospel rapper, shouts to Q the Prophet, how do you get to the point that as a teenager you link up with DJ Clark Kent, Brooklyn mm-hmm. legend? Wow, crazy Big story, deal. crazy story. And yo, first of all, I love the round table. Like, I, I, I tune in. So, and I appreciate the conversation you guys have and the fact that you guys are keeping hip hop alive through the conversation, having very intelligent conversation about the craft and, and putting spotlights on dope artists. Much appreciate appreciate that. that. You know, so, Clark Kent. I was in high school, right? So, this is uh, after the YouTube era. I had a YouTube era where I would do parody music videos. Mm. I would, you know, do anything to kind of get people. Like Kendrick said, I need a new way to get your fans now. Like, anywhere <laughs> I could real. put some product out there. I was, you know, uh, doing covers, doing uh, parodies, doing uh, freestyles on other people's beats. Mm-hmm. And um, I ended up making an album called Equal X, uh, Shut Up and Listen. Cool. And I went to high school to, in Edward R. Murrow. Shout out to Murrow. Shout out to Murrow. Murrow. <laughs> So back then, that was maybe like 2007, 8, uh, I started like pushing mixtapes. So I had like a little street team. So we would like give out mixtape and uh, give out mixtapes in the school and uh, even in Dewey and uh, Midwood. We would have people out there. That, and that was a town. Them schools. That, that was shit. an era. Yeah. He talking that shit right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we was out there just moving them CDs and... Uh, Abria, who is uh, DJ Clark Kent's daughter, Salute. Uh, went to my my school and she got one of the CDs and Fire. brought and brought it to him. So uh, Clark Kent actually called me into a meeting with uh, Combat Jack. Wow. Wow. Rest in peace, Combat, peace. Rest Boy. in peace, Combat That's Jack. That's a fact. Another Crown Heights legend. Yes, legend. sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, shout out to the street. It's got named after Combat Jack. And um, so it was uh, Combat Jack and DJ Clark Kent. Was starting a label and they was talking about signing me because they were impressed with the tape so yeah um, me doing that mixtape taking a lot of the joints that was on the YouTube the parodies and the freestyles and songs and making it into like a compound project impressed DJ Clark Kent and at that point they were trying to sign me I don't think the uh I don't think it got out there like I don't think like the, the label ended up being like a, a thing but you know, that was the initial interest, and DJ Clark Kent is still tapped in. I just released a project, Get Olympics 3. Mm-hmm. I sent that yeah. to him, you know, he's very, you know, open-minded to listening and, you know, giving feedback, so I, I do appreciate that, Crown, Crown Heights legend. Yes, sir. Both, Clark both of Kent. y'all, Clark Kent and Combat Jack, right? right? Yo, so, me and the homie Josh, Super Engineer Josh, was here listening. We listened to a couple songs while we just was vibing out. We listened to New Brooklyn, and we listened to um, Underground Hove. Mm. How'd you get oh, so nice, my nigga? Sweet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's the question. How'd you get so nice, bro? Uh, like, we were talking, you, before, right before you answer, we were talking about, like, the way the pocket worked, the synergy, the timing, mm. the, the, the effortlessness of it all. There's no wasted bars. Just everything was just so smooth and precise and well thought out, bro. Where's that come from, brother? Oh, well, thank you, first of all. Salute. Well, let me give a, a huge shout out to uh, my ancestors and my uh, and my. <laughs> right. And my, and my family, uh, my great-great-grandmother, 
was a, um, a background singer for the Osley Brothers. Wow, Ooh. that's dope. <laughs> and then my mom, uh, she was a gospel singer. You know, she got me into the choir. She was in the church. So I feel like the versatility comes from like the different like points of life that I've been in where I've been able to be creative. Mm-hmm. I was also in a band. So being in the band and being able to sing and rap with a band and then at the same time do the DJ rapper thing, it was like the best of both worlds. So I got a lot of practice in both. So, you know, being able to, you know, flex my skills in both, I feel like it adds to my my skill all around. Gospel, like gospel, the way gospel helps like a rap act is kinda like the way soccer helps like a basketball player. Like all of the all the basketball players in order to play soccer have a great game, great right. footwork. Well, yeah, certain thing. skills. Yeah, you know what I'm okay. saying? Like, you can't, maybe I'm wrong, but I haven't heard it yet. You can't drop a mumble rap gospel album. You kind of have to be good with your words. Clarity. You, got, you have to be lyrical. Mm-hmm. So, this, it's Delivery. almost a, a seamless transition into doing other things with the genre if you mm-hmm. already have your bass as a lyrical bass. But you mentioned around the, the mid 2000s, 2007, 2008, mm-hmm. et cetera with your skill set and where the city was in hip hop. How difficult did you find it to like break through considering it was difficult for New York artists at that time? Mm. That's a good question. When hasn't, well, I can't say when has it ever not been difficult for New York artists because I mean, we was at the top at a point. Uh, But yeah, man. I feel like still to this day, I, it, it's always a grind. It's always an uphill battle, like, getting your music out there, getting people to listen. Especially, you know, you, <laughs> I was watching another episode. <laughs> you guys were talking about, uh, you know, New York being hated on a lot. You know? Max. Hey. And, Don't yeah. mess up your political connection. <laughs> <you know? laughs> At this point, you know, mm. <laughs> I don't even be concerned. Like, It is what it is. Dudes be saying, like, Keep it hip hop, but it's like it's that hip hop, mm-hmm. you know, being like so scared of uh, damaging your political connect that you can't have a hip hop opinion. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's, that's real talk. You're talking yeah. right now. Yeah, you know, so I'm open to having a hip hop opinion. So like right now, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, J- Job spoke about, you know what I mean, being on the forefront of, of that new New York. Let's speak about it. You came in, a, a lot of people's introduction to you was with Pro Era. A lot of people's so idea of the new New York, that post J9 50 era. Right. You know what I mean? With us, I, I'll, I'll put my age bracket in there. A lot of us felt like we was being represented by a whole new era, a whole new, you know what I mean, rounded spitters, people that were speaking about the shit that we grew up uh, going through. So speak about coming into the game, you know, with the associations, the pro era, with the association of Capital Steves. Well, rest in peace, Capital Steves. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, all those guys went to my school. They were like underclassmen. After the years that I was coming in doing the uh, the CD thing, the whole passing around. Uh, mm-hmm. right. So you would say like, what they kind of like your legacy as far as what you established in there? Were they a part of it? Yeah. Like, like you did this with the CDs and they came through. It's like, all right, he's doing that. So let's keep that going. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like a Joey will tell you that, you know, because, yeah, I was coming into school. I had the posters up, promoting. And it was like, yo, like, I like that. Like, Respect you know, grind. on some in- in- inspiration shit. Like, okay, you doing that? Okay, we can, we can do it too. Like, and it wasn't until I left the school that Pro Era had started. Mm-hmm. So I had... I was bad as fuck. I was uh, <laughs> cutting, so uh, I ended up going to like a credit recovery school. Mm-hmm. So I had to dip. Well, I already know the vibes. Uh, right. I know the vibes. He's speaking he that knowing. shit right He's now. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to dip in uh, pro era. I mean, Capital Steez and Joey, like they was like younger, and they was like watching me do the ciphers. Some of them was in the ciphers at uh, a lot of the points, and damn, it's cold as hell. I'm gonna just, <laughs> gotta drink some more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But uh yeah, um yeah, those guys were just like, you know, just watching, just coming to me on some shit like yo, everybody deserves a chance, bro. Like, yo, you out here, you doing your thing, like listen to me, this is what I got to offer. And I was open to hearing them, but it wasn't until I left that the whole Pro Everett movement had started. Mm-hmm. So at that point I had uh I signed a Warner Brothers. Okay. Warner Brothers record to nineteen. 
That's crazy. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> couldn't drink. He going to old Warner Brothers, bro. Yeah, wow. Shout out. You know what I mean? That's elite. And um, so Pro Era was doing their thing. So, you know, I ran into Steez in Soho. I was working with Plain Pat. Shout out to Plain Pat. Salute. Right. Fun fact, Plain Pat and Emil Haney, uh, Kid Cuddy's like, main producers, produced their last uh, hip-hop song together with me. It was called Wake Up Free. And then uh, Emil Haney went off to like do shit with like Lana Del Rey and shit. Oh shit! <laughs> so uh, complete pivot. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> so um, Capital Steve's he ran into me in, in the city, and like I had been going from the high school, and he was a roster when I left. <laughs> But now he was on some crystal shit. Wow. <laughs> you feel me? On so, the crystals. <laughs> so I had saw him. I had just signed. Like I, I just like left the studio with Plain Pat. Feeling good. Feeling good. And he's like, "Yo, what's good?" I'm like, and he looked totally different. He had like fucking like locks and shit. Like beard now, totally different. I'm like, "All right, you, you took this roster shit to another level." I'm like, "All right, bet." He's like, "Yeah, I'm about to head to the store get some crystals and shit." Da da da. But yo, we should definitely link up and fucking uh, work on the record. So uh, that's kind of like how we started, like you know, Ooh. building like outside of that, uh, you know, high school shit. It was kind of like we were both on the rise on some. I'm on the label. They they built a pro era, and we started building from there. That's dope. What would you say your experience was at a major label? Sheesh. <laughs> Let's talk about, talk it. about yeah. it for real. Talk about it. Got a drink for you. <laughs> Take a righteous swing. I've been there, bro. I've been there. Take a righteous swing. Man. Yeah, I hear you talk a lot about the, you know, the insides of the label and shit. Mm-hmm. But signing the Warner Brothers at 19 in 2000, what, 11, 12? That shit was like, it was the blog era. Yeah. Yeah, man. So missed them days. That's man. the time. <laughs> Dante Ross. Shout out to Dante. He was at one of his shows overnight. Yeah, Dante signed me. He was, uh, yeah. If y'all don't know Dante, he signed like leaders in a new school. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. A old true dirty, head. Legend. Old, old dirty bastard. Uh, third base. Legend shit. Official, official dude. Official. He working with Lord Skull right now. Yes, sir. So the fact that you know he showed love and you know signed me to the label that was that was fire. But uh, yeah, it was tricky because. Being on a label and uh, having shit go well, and then having the label do a merger. Yeah, the merger shit. That's, you get caught up in the rapture when the, when the yeah. mergers happen. Yeah. Some some artists just get lost in limbo. Facts. Yeah. That's an interesting story, bro. Yeah, so being a Warner, doing my first project there, and then having the merger happen and being like having new A&Rs. Mm-hmm. So if people don't, don't know how you work as an artist, all that don't shit. Don't know you at all. You feel me? So the rediscovering process. Basically. Right. And then sometimes, you know, they don't even really end up getting it at all. So you gotta, you know, part ways for real. Mm-hmm. So that that's in a nutshell, yeah, it gets tricky, but you know, great experience, like allows you to see the inside, you know, a lot of shit be smoking mirrors growing up. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of shit be the glitz and the glamour, but when you get inside, you really get to see what that shit is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Um, let's talk about the present time. Mm-hmm. Facts. The reason you here. Right. See the hat. The ghetto Olympics. <laughs> hat is yeah, fire. Yeah, let's get it. Let's talk about the let's project. You know, songs and what you were hoping to accomplish with this project. Also, what kind of weed was smoked when I was made? <laughs> <laughs> the the psychedelic Dini with the important vibes, questions, like, right? Yeah, like, let's talk about it. Post, jump yeah, in, bro. brother. Well, shout out to Buddy's Bodega. <laughs> <laughs> Are they shut down now? Free you blood. know how shit is out here. <laughs> yeah, but they, they shut they, down they, 400 <laughs> joints, bro. They shut down 400 Are they still months. open, bro? They, they still moving. We still work. moving out here, buddies. Right, I'm going to get the information after, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a fact. Talk. But um, Get Olympics 3, man. Uh... Uh, the third installment to the Ghetto Olympics um, trilogy. Yes, sir. Uh, the project just came about with me just trying to put out music. Mm. It's on some shit like, yo, let me put out an EP. I had a project called Crown Fried. Mm. And, uh, yeah, man. Sir. Culture. Good documentary on it, too. Oh, well. thank you, bro. Thank you. Fabulous ended up doing the remix to my joint, That Chicken. So oh, yeah. within that whole moment, I was like, yeah, let me get a project out. Like, and Ghetto Olympics kind of spoke to 
like how I was moving, and how I still move for real. Like, nigga, it's time to get it, and mm -hmm. we gonna move like on an Olympia would to get our goal. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like high level, you know, each time. But uh, yeah, get Olympics three, you know, just the third installment. It was Olympic season, so I felt like it was the perfect, perfect time, time to drop it. Yeah. Right. And from there, you know, uh, you know, I'm just keeping that 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 energy alive, that that uh, go get it energy, staying on go, go get Olympics, go. Like, uh, what kind of listening experience you would as a, as a person who doesn't know you, mm -hmm. and they put on get Olympics three for the first time. Mm -hmm. What kind of experience do you think that listener would be able to take away from that? Well, I take pride in being an MC. You know, for real, and mm -hmm. out of New York and out of Brooklyn, uh, co-signed by a fabulous. Mm -hmm. You know, so I always, you know, gotta make sure that the bars are up to par. Um, like I said, I'm I'm from the church, so you know, the soulful. Mm -hmm. You know, the Osley Definitely brothers, there. like I said, yeah. my grandmother, the soulfulness. Definitely there. I feel like it, it gotta be there, and um, yeah, just just real life perspective from a, like a young black man just coming up. You know, I feel like I'm in between that age of, all right, I still can respect, like, the the drill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm a purist. Yes, sir. You're, you're off sir. the floor. <laughs> right. All certified. You right. know, so I, I appreciate it all. And I feel like with my talent and versatility, I'm able to uh, deliver an interesting perspective within the middle. Right. Yes. You know, so I'm gonna keep it lyrical, but I'm still keep it current. And I feel like I'm, it's just a real a, adaptable project. I feel like if you never heard me before, you gonna just just expect a MC that got a lot of tricks in this this bag. You feel uh, me? Like going from Ghetto Olympics two to three, I just. I just was like, wow, this guy like leveled up on the Sonics. You know, I always say like rapping is rapping and being right. good at rapping. He rapping is important, his ass off on it. But sounding That's why good it. while rapping is very important, which I think was really good with the combination between you and Money Wise. Mm -hmm. How did that work out? How, how did y'all connect? Did yeah. yeah. Shout out to Money Montage, Salute. my producer, my main producer. Me and him, this was a soul project. This is like. Talk I can tell, it. man. Talk about it. I can tell. Me and him, Sonics, like, man. yeah, like, we locked in for this one. Like, the other Ghetto Olympics is like a dime a dozen project. This one was like me and him, so. I can feel it. You know, we tapped in, like, we locked in. And uh, he's, like, he's from, like, upstate. Mm. And upstate we getting a lot of light right yeah. now, too. They doing right. <laughs> and we <laughs> haven't, we hadn't met. But we had been doing music for years. Like he had like a few other tracks on like like the Crown Pride Project, like mm -hmm. I said, and like the, the other uh, Ghetto Olympics. But he had never like fully produced the joint. But mm -hmm. we had been tapped in so long with the. Uh, we had did these other projects called Training Two. Mm -hmm. Training Two. I mean, well, Training One and Two, because they were like preludes to like the next Ghetto Olympics project. Right. Once the idea came about, we was like, hmm, maybe we can keep this going. So with training, was like, okay, a little EP, then Get Olympics 2. Then we did training 2, now Get Olympics 3. So mm -hmm. Get Olymp the, the trainings was like our bond, but now the Get Olympics 3 is like the album version of those little EPs and installments. So, uh, yeah, we took a relationship that was like through the internet, sending beats back and forth till like we met a few times and now we we completely locked in that's like that's my bro so you real. would say that's like yeah 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 a1 producer going forward oh, yeah mm -hmm. for sure definitely magic was made yeah thank um, you thank you you've mentioned it dini's mentioned it jaws mentioned it versatility is the first thing that i think of on this project like you known as a high level spitter you know what i mean we it not and that's to be you know that's a very important thing you rap your ass off, but the versatility on here the songwriting <sighs> The, the you know I know it's it's a meme these days but the melodies bro I didn't realize you was nice like melodies. that with those you know what I mean this is like high level music For like real. when you were going into this project did you say I want to like kind of you know cover all bases or is this just how along with your producers shit worked out as making a project uh a little bit of both um a lot of people don't really well I don't know if y'all this this not it's not hip hop but yeah, phony, phony people. Uh, I had a uh, your I, group. Yeah, I was in a band called Phony People, mm -hmm. and like, like I said, like the guy. As much as the gospel kind of built my chops up, 
like dealing with like uh, melodies and uh, soulfulness, mm -hmm. being with them kind of like definitely helped double that shit That's up too. Yeah, musical individual. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. Love, I gonna, so I was gonna ask you a question too. Now that you're yeah, from a group, yeah. you know what I'm saying now you're so. What's like the biggest takeaways you have now being like from a group to being like a solo artist? What do you think are the biggest changes of the? You know how just the differences basically. I mean, I started off as a solo artist. Uh, the group was kind of like a side project that ended oh. up being like a you know a main project because the it demand. Worked. Yeah, <laughs> it worked. Yeah, when it works, like, it works. Back to the melodies aspect as far as the projects go. Like, mm -hmm. like that was more or less like how the beats spoke to you. Like, I'm gonna do this here. I'm gonna do that here. Or, or you more meticulous about how that comes into play with your music. Um, yeah, I mean, Montage sent me shit and then it kind of just speaks to me. Okay. But, like, I mentioned the the experience with the band and the choir and shit just as things that feed my particular uh, musical palette that allows me to do things on these type of productions like I do because, like, I got that experience from, you That's know, fine. working with them and That's working fine. with, you know, being in church and shit, you know? And Ghetto oh Olympics God. 3, as we're talking about it, mm -hmm. on all DSPs, mm -hmm. got you. Fire. Please listen to yes, Trauma so. ASAP. Yeah. Oh, wow. Listen so. to Trauma right now, bro. Ghetto Olympics okay. 3 <laughs> out right now, everywhere. Yo. Everywhere. Start there. Don't Don't work your way back. falling is my yeah. shit. You know what I mean? Because wow. the thing is, when right we do now. these interviews, sometimes if we... Guilty as charged. We forget to ask the artists and they be in the chat where we can get the music. So I said, let me just ask it right now before y'all get on me. Um, but let's let's get into the culture a little bit. Dama does in the building with us. Hit the like button, run those likes up. Tap in. You know what I mean? Tap in with this artist right here, Fire, out of Fuck New York winner. City. Because Love. I remember they was asking us, who's hot in New York? Do the knowledge. But we're going to help you do the knowledge by bringing these artists up here. But we look at the space, right? Yes, sir. We look at the New York City underground right now. It's doing okay. Mm -hmm. You hear the Sonics. You hear uh, what a lot of the, the kind of beats a lot of these artists are rapping on. Then we hear Dime a Dozen. You're not necessarily doing what they're doing. Do you ever feel a, a pressure to be like, all right, these guys are doing all right over here. Let me lean into that particular sound. You know, it's very interesting. I'm going to give it to Stephen Mace because you always talk like <laughs> industry talk. Like, I know a lot in, in the industry, like, dealing with artists. Niggas would be like, yo, stick to this sound because it don't it won't make no sense if you ain't you like but nowadays people are coming through like very versatile, but back in the day, like niggas was trying to get you to stick to like one sound. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these days, I look at it as a gift and a curse because I never stuck to that. But then I feel like we leaning in, into more of an era where it's it's gonna be allowed for artists to be more versatile. But mm -hmm. I do understand marketing and then I understand like a niche fan base and shit, but honestly, I, I had a one of my my homies tell me the other day, you are an artist, not an entertainer. Right. Mm, that part. So, I'm creating. Nah, I gotta ask because when, when we go to these these shows, okay, right? Yeah, Let's say it's a ten rapper set. Mm -hmm. All ten of them have a similar aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Some are maybe more lyrically dexterous than the others. But they all pick the same kind of beat, the same kind of sonics, and it's like nobody wants to veer off a little bit, or just everyone just doing what works to get to the bag. Macy, thought I don't want to step on, or you might have another question. Nah, nah, you you know, I, and I'm not trying to veer off too crazy. We speaking about you know uh, versatility. We speaking about other ways to the bag. I'm I'm interested, and you may want to you know. I'm not trying to be in your pockets or nothing, but the word on the streets is that you writing jingles out here, bro. Like, <laughs> what's, what's the word? Getting that jingle money, bro? Yeah, yeah. 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 bro. <laughs> Holla at me, money man. in the hills, man. Yeah, um... Teach the artists how to get some money in their pockets, bro. Well, sh yeah, man. Just, yo, keep your relationships. Mm, do not mm. burn bridges. Don't burn bridges. I mean... Nice. <laughs> don't burn bridges. <laughs> I mean, you know, just... I got a great homie. Shout out to Eli Makes Beats. Mm -hmm. My my boy Eli. Uh, we were just working together on some just creative shit. You know, just keep your creative relationships open. I feel like when you organically work with people and just like just got just a good energy with them, shit to build. Like my boy Eli, we were just working on music and he had the opportunity to, to work on something for Samsung. Mm -hmm. And it was like a Christmas campaign, which we didn't ultimately end up getting. Missy Elliott got it. But... Good competition. Mm. It, it, to be in the conversation yeah, right. is a win. That's, that's you know me on this. Being in the conversation puts you in the conversation. Now yes. you 
writing jingles. You feel me? So it's like, we didn't make this one, but Domino's hit us up for the next one. Mm, you know, bro. so went in the studio, cut something for Domino's. Now we got a Domino's commercial. When you feel me, all <laughs> work. Pusha T did all Ghetto Olympics. Olympics. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Metaphorically yeah. speaking, you, you know what I mean? Do that. I want to get it. So, you know, I, so I'm at two Domino's commercials at the moment. As though, <laughs> yeah. But like the landscape now, hip hop overall today, 2024. Yes, sir. You're also you're an artist, but you're also a consumer. Mm-hmm. What is your point of view of that landscape like? Like what, when you tune into hip hop on a day to day basis, what is your main takeaway from the space today? <laughs> I mean, being in the industry so long, um, you start to pick up on just marketing and the cliches of marketing mm-hmm. a little bit. Mm-hmm. So like. I kind of be over shit. Like I said, I'm an artist, not an entertainer. So I'll sit there and be like, okay, I see what y'all doing. I like that rollout. I like, I'll be speaking from, like, a lot of, like, since podcasts and shit exist nowadays, I feel like a lot more people are starting to get more into that lingo. Like, okay, bet. Oh, niggas talking about rollouts, behind the scenes information that niggas don't, weren't necessarily hip to. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of, I've been on that. So it's like, we kind of speaking you in that same it, thing. You, you know, know what I, mean? I lived it. So it's like, I'm watching it now and it's just like, okay. But then when I start seeing the marketing, it's like, what are we marketing? And what are, who are we marketing to? And why are we doing oh, this to market? Right and then it's Question like, it's right now. It's like, damn, like, Jeez. then my intelligence starts to get insulted. And then it's ah. like, and then it's like, okay, who are you walking into? It? Are you, 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 this is supposed to be for me? This is supposed to be for my people? Who is this for? Mm-hmm. You know, and That's then... That's real. Yeah, it gets a lot. It gets... It gets tricky when I, I start to see shit like that because, you know, when you want to speak up about it, that's when you start to get shunned or, mm-hmm. you know, relationships start to get shut down because you're speaking the truth and into the situation it's like marketing is all i feel like just to get people to you know pull up and under, like get into something get into but it's like yeah I, be, I see through it i see behind it and it's just like bro like i can't really get with it i got two questions but i'm gonna ask the first one now okay do you think that the marketing of the music and the music itself is as far apart as it has it ever been in hip-hop mm. Yes. Okay. That took that took a little thought, but yeah. <laughs> because yeah, man. Because at this point, you got <laughs> you got bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to be nice, yeah. <laughs> you got bullshit at the forefront. Yeah. <laughs> and then you know, like that's the 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 natural uh, hip hop. The high quality the shit. The high quality shit is just like it's 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 is you know not celebrated and then the marketing of shit is to put the the bullshit in the forefront because that's kind of what's like popular. Yeah, you got mm-hmm. Steve Stout saying lyricism no matter. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm. Steve Nas Steve Stout? Mm-hmm. Him. Yeah. Today at least in this era, I guess. Then the next question, because I, I saw how you thought about it before you answered it, so it got <laughs> me to thinking. Nah. Would you say that like how you view the space, the industry that is, mm-hmm. and your honesty are conflicted. Like, has it gotten you in trouble where like you told too much of the truth at times? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Um. But uh, yeah. But it's like somebody gotta do it sometimes, oh. and I feel like people be just trying to protect their relationships. Honest, I don't got no kids. You feel me? Like, <laughs> you know. Talk about it. Talk about it. You feel me? I, I, I'm, Jesus walked, my nigga. So it's like, <laughs> you know, we got to be out here in these streets, That's my nigga. Fight, it's yeah. like, For I, real. I, I'll be the sacrificial lamb sometime. You know, if I got to be the one that, that bites the bullet, that takes the bullet, it's like, fuck it. You mm-hmm. know, because if niggas, I hate when niggas talk about, yo, I keep it hip hop. I keep, nigga, what's hip hop? If you going you going bullshit and be about the check, I mean, mm. get your money. Niggas check, got bills, check matters, huh? Get, check your, matters. get your money, but <laughs> it's like if you got a nigga that you understand, don't give a fuck about that. Let him rock or give advice to that nigga mm. behind the scenes. You feel me? Don't shun the nigga because he's, oh he's not going with the program. It's mm, like man. Yeah. 
He's speaking from an, an, nah, an event that facts. happened. We got to talk off the wax. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean so, some fact. things happen. But <laughs> <laughs> last question, because we got to wrap this up, right? What would you say to a person with their, a young person with their eyes on the industry who's trying to get a foot in the door? What we, how would you, what, what, what like advice would you give to that person? This is the wild, wild west. Rock Nation is distro kid right now. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like niggas is switching the whole fucking formula because the new formula is they gotta catch up with it. Mace was talking about that. You feel me? It's like it's new. It's like everybody's trying to figure it out. You know, mm-hmm. I can speak for myself from experience being in the game uh, during the YouTube era and watching that shit transform into some industry shit now. Like that yeah. shit wasn't for uh, the industry at first. It at all. They didn't have ads. <laughs> you know what I mean? For real. Yeah. You, you could know? put anything on YouTube once anything, upon a time. Anything. You know, yeah. I remember, yeah, shit was popping up on YouTube, like, randomly, like, so, it's just, it's just a new game. Would you say it's better to be independent in 2024? I say it's better to be creative in 2024. Mm. Okay. Good question. Okay. You know, so it's like, just do you and just put it out however you can. And, you know, I feel like, the people out there, the artists out there have given us enough like marketing class mm. for you to figure out like a yeah. way that you can put yourself out there that can be appealing to people. But just try it in a different way, you know, and, and, and just pay attention to like what the wave is, but don't ride that shit. But be yourself. Be this yourself. Spitting right now. Hey, yeah, bro. Be yeah. yourself. Be yourself. You know, be versatile. Be outside of the box, you know, because the wave is going to be what it is for then but if you person if you versatile enough to dip you know your foot in the lake but still keep it you mm. you know you can get in the DJ set with a cash code bane but still be dime a dozen it'll be alright you can That's light fair. flex mm-hmm. um, <laughs> it's a fact let, listen to the music let the people know where they can find your music and where they can find you on social media <sighs> well my social media is dime a dozen. That's D Y M E A D U Z I N. Everywhere. That's on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah. Google. Google. <laughs> Do your Google. Same it's thing. free. Apple Music, Spotify. Apple Music, Spotify. Yeah. Um, YouTube. Your dime a dozen. Everything. YouTube. Check everywhere. Them out. Everywhere. IG, All DSPs. Everywhere. Dime a dozen. D Y M E A D U Z I N. I mean, it's going to be on the video. You can copy it. Of course. Of course. Yes, but you yes, know, yes, niggas sir. don't pay attention. That's why I ask. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get I love you, chat, but some of y'all don't some pay y'all attention. Some of y'all don't be tapped <laughs> in. You know? It is what it is. <laughs> I gotta cover my bases. That's a fact. Ghetto Olympics 3 this has been a great job, interview. Right? Yes, Ghetto Olympics. Shout out to Josh for tolerating us tonight. Love Thank you, you Josh. Dini the balance. Yo, Josh. Take us home, man. Yo, Dama Dozen in the building. Thank y'all. Yes, Elaborate guests. Happy Good to problem, have them. Tap in. You will be impressed. May Cito, voice of the culture. Jarvi the point guard. The goat. Sincere. The rap snob. We miss you once again. Miss you, you know the vibes, my brother. Miss you. We love you. I'm Dini the balance of the force. And with our powers Shit. combined, it's the Rap Roundtable, man. We out of here. Salute. Bow. The heroes and Hit the that like button. Lock in with us. Lock in with Dama Dozen. Yes, Good sir. shit. High flute and shit. Fuck with us. Tap yes, in. Yes, sir. Dama. To stand up to ever try your perks. Spidey's on high alert. Break up tree and light up when I'm tired of work. Strand red like my ops spitting the fire verse. Summertime to the Zaz in a designer purse. I prefer the strips of Fonto, but the grab will work. Remember when I wasn't rolling spliffs and getting higher first. Brought up by a Christian mom to shout a riot curse. Now my preacher proud and I ain't got no vibes for church. I father, I father, but y'all style so why bother? Cruel and foul responses to y'all father. Don't let your partners pump you up like the part father. Don't let like the Godfather, mafioso flow They feel it from the style Cause the suit fabric Italian The swag is nostalgic I cast it for the series Cause he spit it so shallow The mob is full of weakness Gambinos that's childish Bees swarm when you kids get destroyed They smoking mid and they women mid Call them bare minimum boys Envious nigga clip from his job at the bodega I just did a strand with buddies I can get you employed This my mafioso flow Frank White Visions Crown King lay a nigga down for that chicken Grandpa never had a will but had a smithin In case you wanna play a bad boy I keep a pistol for a pistol mm. Boss Crown Heights top shot a split for hot robber 
Block bomber, name a nigga who done dropped harder from the quarters with the watchtowers, lit the dark corners. Flex only drop bombs cause you drop dollars. <laughs> Pussies got a price tag. Pussies pillow talking with they shorties by the nightstand. Put me in predicaments to shorten niggas' lifespans, pussy. High school, you was never like that, pussy. Nice song, you was never like that, pussy. I don't put my trust in any kings. I just said you getting rusty for the ring. Feel this cloth that I'm cut from to come fuck with the regime. They say hunger, but it's greed. You've been lusting for the green. They say legend, I just say it's a legend. Image and legacy, dead it. Think it's time this old head gets severed. Nigga, I don't wanna hear about potential, I'm a star. Stronger after everything I've been through, I survived. Some only in it for the women in the cars. Gunning for your glory, got no pity for your pride. Go home. You was never ready for the war, go home. You can never level with the boy, go home. She'll help steady with the sword. Been the illest for forever, but I'm better than before. Dumb. Let's get it. <laughs> <laughs>